Hi, and welcome to the Cardiovascular Institute at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. My name is Mark Josephson, and I am Chief of the Cardiovascular Division and Director of the Harvard Thorndike Electrophysiology Institute at the BIDMC. I would imagine the reason you're watching this video was because you or someone you know has been diagnosed with a cardiac arrhythmia or some form of irregular heartbeat. The field that takes care of extra heartbeats is called cardiac electrophysiology and has been my clinical and research focus for the past 40 years. Great advances have been made in this field over this time. It's been changed from one of intellectual curiosity to an important part of our therapeutic armamentarium. We are now able to treat and cure a variety of arrhythmias that have heretofore only been able to be treated by open heart surgery. Currently, we are able to diagnose and treat a wide variety of cardiac arrhythmias. The methods we use to treat cardiac arrhythmias include pacemakers, defibrillators, and catheter ablation, by which arrhythmias can actually be eliminated and cured. I went in to see Dr. Josephson, and he knew my situation. He knew the medicine I was taking and the problems I was having. And the first medicine wasn't happening. The second medicine had so many side effects. To me, it was worth it to try something else. They're referred to CVI, and um, they are told that they're going to have a procedure with one of our physicians. We try to collect all their medical history. Um, we do have them have special tests. There is. We ask that the patients have an MRI, if they can have an MRI. Hi, Mr. Page, this is Toby. I'm calling from Beth Israel Deaconess. We try to get all those appointments addressed right in the same day. We do try to have MRIs, CAT scans, and the pre-admission testing all done in the same day so that the patient doesn't need to come to the hospital more than once or twice. I want to just explain to you everything that's going to happen while you're here at the hospital, and then I'm going to give you some instructions, and we're going to go over your medications. A scheduler will be calling you before your procedure, usually the day before or a few days before, um, to go over your medical history, why you're coming in for your procedure, um, any medications that you're on, any new medications, um, lab work that has been drawn recently. You'll take the elevator up. We have patients scheduled for procedures starting at 6.45 a.m. Then when you come off the elevator, you take a left and there'll be a main desk there. If you arrive after seven o'clock, there is a secretary there to greet you, to check you in, have you sign a few forms and put an ID bracelet on. Have a seat and we'll come and get you shortly, okay? Okay, all right. And the nurses in the holding area, such as me or one of the other nurses, will come out to get you sometime about 6.45 to 7. When we bring you into the holding area, you have to undress and put on a johnny. Um, and we have a bag for all your clothes, we have socks for your feet and blankets that will get you warm under. We'll put a peripheral IV in. We will take an EKG. If you're having a pacemaker, um, we'll shave the area around where they're going to be doing the pacemaker, as well as your chest, obviously, if you're a man. Okay, Mrs. Gould, here's your daughter. We'll prep you. The doctor will come in to speak with you. And then after that's all done, that's when we'll bring the family member in. So most procedures, after we have you ready, we'll call your family to come in to sit with you. Sometimes, depending on how busy the holding area is, we ask that your family come in for five minutes and then go back out to the waiting areas. Usually takes us about 45 minutes, we say, to an hour to get you ready. So generally, that's the ideal amount of time. The first procedures of the day generally start at about 8 o'clock, sometimes a little bit earlier, sometimes a little bit later. But ballpark is about 8 o'clock, so you'll be with us for about an hour in the morning. The anesthesiologist will also see you in the prep area and make sure that you understand everything about the anesthesia that you're going to get. And once that form is signed, you sign a consent for the actual procedure, you sign a general um, admission consent, which just gives us the um, right to take care of you. Once all those forms are signed and the paperwork's done, then I come into the process and actually bring you back to the procedure room with the anesthesiologist. So the ball be 65 when you go back to the procedure room, it's a big room with lots of monitors, lots of wires. You know, everyone thinks that they can get ESPN up. And it's very technical, there's a lot of stuff in the room and it can be overwhelming when you get in there, but that's everything that we use to give us the data that we need while you are having your procedure done. With a pulmonary vein isolation, you are asleep through the whole procedure. We do do some other procedures where you're not asleep and you are awake through the whole procedure. Um, those can be overwhelming and anxiety provoking because our goal is to get you into the rhythm that you are not comfortable with or you want us to take care of. Um, but 
what I try to tell you is that someone's with you all the time. We're always in the room with you. We have you connected to a lot of monitors. Um, we keep a very close eye on you. We use these tubes, which um, this is the sheath, which gets us access into your groin and allows the catheters to go up into the different parts of your heart. The catheters are tubes that we thread up um, to your heart. There are metal pieces in here that allow us to get the electrical signals from your heart. It also allows us to pace and stimulate your heart. So this catheter is very important to the EP study. The ablation catheters are a little different. Um, still have the same amount of metal in them, but they actually allow us, they connect to a generator which allow us to put radio frequency energy, which is heat, right at the source of where we want to burn or get rid of that electrical signal that we think is starting your arrhythmia or your fast rhythm. So as catheters are placed up to your heart and threaded to your heart, people feel different things. Some people feel nothing, but some people do feel the, the catheters going up, feeling little twinges in their back. Some people feel an awareness of the catheters being there, but anything that you feel, you just talk to the nurse and we'll reassure you that that's normal. All I remember is lying down with three or four doctors around me and stuff like that. And so, and they told, more or less told me what I was going to go through. They take all your signs and to make, make sure everything is okay, which I guess it was because I had the procedure. Pace, please. Here you are. Oh, you're okay. We always try our best to keep an eye on the board, keep the family updated. If there's any updates that the, that the um, patient has gone to, an intervention, such as a stent, we like to keep the family updated in the waiting area. So the procedure's done. Um, we then take out all the catheters. Um, most of the time we suture the sheets in, which are like those big IVs. We cover your groins and we take the tube, the breathing tube out. You're awake and with it at that point. Um, and we bring you up to the post-anesthesia care unit. Once their bed rest is over, whether that's two hours or six hours, we'll get the patients up. We will walk them around the holding area several times. Um, usually that happens over a 15 minute period. We'll go for one walk, we'll have them sit down for a bit, go for another walk. That's just uh, both to make sure that they feel well, make sure their blood pressure is okay, make sure that the, um, whether it's the access site or the generator change site, whatever it is, to make sure that that is stable, that they feel well. A nurse practitioner will see every patient. Um, they'll go through medications, any follow-up appointments, any questions that they have. The nurse in the holding area will reinforce that um, and just make sure as long as they're feeling well, we'll send the patient's family for the car, have them pick them up right in front of the FAR building, and they'll be on their way. The advances being made in our Harvard Thorndike Electrophysiology Institute enable us to provide you with the best clinical treatments in the United States and around the world. Research and education are inseparable from the high quality clinical care delivered at the BIDMC. This triad is our mantra and has permitted us to train the future leaders of cardiovascular medicine while providing the most up-to-date care for our patients. Unfortunately, I don't get to see the people after the procedure, but we hear good things. Um, so but having people not be in their AFib when they leave the room is kind of rewarding for all of us. Medicine today is so amazing. It's, it's un, unbelievable. And uh, I have had, a, I think it'll be five years this August, and I've really had no problems whatsoever.